the James Wan horror empire continues to expand. You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Annabelle. is a ghost. It used to be if you wanted a good scare, you saw an Alfred Hitchcock film. After all, he invented the slasher flick with Psycho. Then as the genre's popularity grew exponentially, new masters of horror emerged. George Romero, John Carpenter, David Cronenberg, Dario Argento, Wes Craven. These are the greats, directors who made a career out of horror, instead of just stopping by to see if they could pull one off, as some other notable directors have done quite well. And the most recent addition to this list of masters has been James Wan. Sure, his experience with Saw left a bad taste in his mouth, but he rallied back in spectacular fashion, first with the Insidious franchise and then with The Conjuring, a $20 million flick that went on to gross over $300 million worldwide and become one of the most successful horror films ever made. Yes, interestingly, for a guy who was one half of the team that dreamed up Saw, Juan's success stems from a lack of gore. He makes old-fashioned horror films with top-notch production values, which in turn makes his films accessible to mainstream audiences instead of only appealing to hardcore horror fans. And now, as Juan tries to move beyond directing horror, he's still producing horror. Maybe as a safety net in case Fast 7 doesn't work out? After all, of all the horror masters, only Hitchcock was able to have a career outside of the genre, and that's because he came to it late in his career. Juan is producing Insidious Chapter 3, and while he's not producing The Conjuring 2, he is producing the spin-off Annabelle, an origin story for the infamous doll in the film. And he's leaving his legacy in good hands, as his frequent cinematographer, John R. Leonetti, is directing here. So, an origin story, eh? Annabelle is very much based on a real doll, and the story in The Conjuring is said to be true. But this origin story is pure Hollywood. However, Annabelle isn't the first real-life demonic doll to capture Tinseltown's heart. Remember Chucky? Well, he's based on Robert, a doll given to a young boy down in Key West, Florida in 1906 by a servant who didn't really like that family too much and was known to dabble in voodoo. The doll is still on display down in Florida, and you're advised to ask its permission before taking a photo. Hmm. I hope someone asked Annabelle before signing away her film rights. This is certainly not on the level of The Conjuring, but I still enjoyed Annabelle because it's a horror movie that's just my speed. If you watch this channel regularly, then you know that I have a very low threshold for horror films. But Annabelle is like a good ghost story that you read, it scares the crap out of you, and then you wonder why you ever read it in the first place. But then you want to go and do it again. Uh, and I think the reason I like James Wan's films is because of their storytelling. As I said, this is like a good ghost story. And not only does he try and put a lot of mythology and, you know, reason behind the scares that you see, but I think he incorporates just enough real-life elements to scare the crap out of you, as I said. And I don't want to give away uh, anything in the film. There's a lot of really good scares here, and there's actually a lot of stuff that's not shown or even hinted at in the trailer. This movie goes to an entirely different level than the trailer hints at, and I thought that was great. And it really particularly scared me because I wasn't expecting it, so I don't want to give it away for you either. But to kind of give you an idea of how I left the theater, at the end of the movie, and this isn't a spoiler, at the end of the movie they remind you that Annabelle is a real doll and she lives in a glass case in Lorraine Warren's basement or wherever she keeps all the, the crap she gets on her, uh, on her uh, adventures and it has to be blessed by a priest twice a month to keep uh, you know, keep it safe from the public. And this movie freaked me out so much and incorporated so much real life elements that I was like, Who's going to watch that doll when Lorraine Warren dies? Because Lorraine Warren's getting up there. And you know what? This story might not be true, but it might be true. And since Lorraine Warren's the one who told us all about this doll and made it a, you know, legendary, got it to that level of status, and she took it upon herself to protect us in the first place, I think she kind of owes us to make sure that someone makes sure a priest comes and bless that do blesses that doll twice a month forever. Because you know what? 
it's better to be safe than sorry. And I think that's a big lesson to take away from this movie. It's kind of a theme throughout, especially at the beginning of the film. If only they'd been safe, they wouldn't have been so sorry. Now, the actors here, I think they're all very good. You know, one of the critiques I saw leveled against this film is that it was derivative. You know, it copied a lot of other horror films. And I could totally see that. There's a lot of Rosemary's Baby here, and there's also a, a decent amount of Insidious. But at the same time, I think all horror movies are somewhat derivative, so it didn't bother me here because I thought this movie very much had a personality of its own. Now, the lead actors, uh, uh, let me see here, Annabelle Wallace, same name as the doll, uh, the lead, female lead, and her husband, played by Ward Horton, they were perfectly fine. They did a nice job. Uh, uh, while I was watching the movie, I thought to myself, you know what? You guys are no Patrick Wilson and Rose Byrne, of course, the stars of the Insidious franchise. And they just, those are two actors that have a little more personality, a little more, uh, you know, verve. They kind of pump the story up. They elevate the material. They have more, just immediate depth. Just when you look at them, you, you can sense, you know, stuff going on beneath the surface. Not so much with uh, Wallace and Horton, but when I was walking home after seeing the movie, I thought to myself, hey, they're like dolls themselves, Barbie and Ken. And I wish the movie had picked up on that a little bit because it would have made their casting actually uh, quite clever. But again, they didn't hurt the movie. I thought they really fit in with the roles and what was required of them. They really were this, you know, Barbie and Ken, perfect couple who found themselves dealing with evil. Uh, everybody else was also very good, uh, but the real standout, I have to say, was the baby their baby that they have. I couldn't find an acting credit for this baby. I looked all over the internet for at least 20 minutes. <laughs> I couldn't find it in any of the normal places, but I could swear that this baby is the Vargas twins. These are two little girls. Uh, they were in Neighbors. They were fantastic in Neighbors. They're in the upcoming Alexander in the very terrible, horrible day. Uh, and they're just really good, amazing actors. They, they can listen, which as we all know is the key to being a really great actor. They, these babies can listen already. And in fact, there was a scene in the film where this baby was so cute that the enti entire audience laughed at the baby in the middle of this scary horror film. Everyone was just like, aww. But, so not only was it fun to see such an uh, intelligent, good uh, baby who was such a good actress, well, it's two babies, they sw swapped them out, but it really made you want nothing to happen to this baby. You were like, not the baby, because you really care about it. It wasn't just like this little bundle. This baby had a personality, far more than her parents. And I guess that was also good because the parents were so blank that the baby really stood out. But I had a fun time watching this movie. Some people might say, oh, it's too tame. Uh, you know, it doesn't have enough gore and scares for me. But it scared me plenty. I had to hide my face a whole bunch the whole time. And as I said, it had just enough real elements in it that it freaked me out. And actually, when I was walking home from the theater, I saw uh, in, a, in another theater I happened to walk by, they had a big glass front on this theater. And they had hired an actress to sit in the window with an Annabelle doll. And she was like, oh, I like your doll. You know, they had all this weird stuff written on the window. And everyone was like, oh, that's so cool. But I didn't even want to look at them because I was still uh, scared from the movie and freaked out. So it affected me. I thought it was fun. And if you're somebody who doesn't like these, like, gory uh, uh, horror films and you prefer just a good ghost story to curl up with and then not be able to go to sleep because you freaked yourself out, then I think you'd enjoy Annabelle. All right, that's my review. Thank you so much for tuning in. And you can check out some more episodes right now.